Liberty Phoenix on the line with us via Skype. Phoenix, you're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Liberty hey guys, Phoenix. Um, I was just sitting here thinking, you know, I kind of wish and I can't wait for there to be a day where it's acceptable for there to be a no homo landia, like whatever they would want to term it, uh, a land <laughs> uh? where no gay people are allowed. Uh, okay. Don't construe me to think that um, I'm against homosexuality. I was raised by a gay man. Are you no just saying that it. then because you want all the homophobes to go to the same place? Well, I believe that in in a time where we're all willing to respect each other's boundaries and not use violence against one, one another, um, if there was a, a, a group of people that wanted to get together and form that type of community, as long as they didn't use force, fraud, or coercion against anyone, they could live there and, and be by themselves and trade with people that are willing to trade with people like that and leave everyone else alone. You so, know, that's an interesting possibility. Like, not that I would want to live in this homophobe society, but if it could peacefully exist on its own, secluded somewhere, nobody was trying to invade it and overthrow it, that would be a real stepping stone for society. Who would cut their hair? <laughs> <laughs> Are, are you, you saying that I'm sure there's very homo heterosexual men who are hair? good. No, there's plenty of heterosexual men, I'm sure, that are very good at being stylists. Sure, there are. Hold on, hold but on. They just give bus I, cuts. I, Ian is, yeah, Ian's <laughs> presuming that they would not have electricity and, you know, clippers. So what you're saying is you'd only be able to get a buzz cut in the homophobe land. <laughs> no, that's or, what you're or saying. Or a bowl. <laughs> or what? A bowl, a bowl cut. cut. Okay, yeah, that's a bowl cut. Bowl cut. Page <laughs> boy. Put the bowl on your head and cut around it, right? But, yeah. So yeah, it would basically it. be bigot stand. We want. Yeah. We want freedom for everyone, not just ourselves. And just like in the case with uh, where people, where the people didn't want to make the cake for the gay couple, that's well yeah. within their rights. That's their business. They shouldn't have to be forced to do anything. I agree. And right. If they and want to have that type of land, that's their business. It's great. As long as they're not hurting anyone else. Yeah, Everyone should have I'd like to see to that happen. I, I, in fact, I'd like to see it happen with homophobes and racists and other bigots. You know, yeah, let, let's the, move yeah, them all together. Not that you want to see these people exist, just because you know they're hateful and uh, they're, you know, they basically dislike this general group of people based on little to no reasoning. Yeah, I'd, but it, it's just it would be nice if you know we could all respect each other's boundaries enough well, the ideal to would let be that, that they'd, exist. They'd open their mind and not have to be a homophobe anymore and, you know, try to actually be a human being towards others and understand that we're all just people and everybody's got different preferences and as long as you aren't hurting somebody else, then who cares? But yeah, if they're not going to change their mind and open, you know, open up to those possibilities, then I would certainly love to see them all move to one particular place <laughs> where I don't have to ever encounter them. I think that'd be fantastic. Uh, are you saying they should move to Somalia? I didn't say that. They can Madagascar. To, as long as it's not Keene, New Hampshire, I'll be all right with it. What well, about the rest guys. of the U.S.? Oh, thanks, uh, Phoenix. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, hearing Liberty from Phoenix. You. Well, yeah, that's just it. I mean, I don't think a lot of people would be really welcoming towards the idea of a bunch of bigots or homophobes moving into their community, but they'd probably Unless be. Unless they're all homophobes and bigots. Well, therefore, looking at maybe some towns in the Bible Belt might be a good starting point. Remember, we did the story several months ago about the Bigot Town Project. That's right. That was in North, North Dakota. Dakota. What was it, like a town of six or something like that? Uh, I think it was like 15, and the one <laughs> black guy in town is also a city councilor. Yeah, and then some crazy racist a-hole moved in there, and he's been trying to recruit other white supremacist types to join him, right? Yes. I forget what it was called, though. I don't remember the name of it. I don't know. Though. It's not called the Bigot Town Project, no. but I'm sure if you Google... But how tense would that be in the city hall? Like, there's just the one black guy, and everyone else is white, and they're cle like clearly, if you're a bigot in that situation, the only one person that you are going to be verbally assaulting is... That one African-American gentleman. Well, didn't it turn out that this guy was like a felon and he couldn't vote anyway or something like that? The guy that started the Bigot Town yeah. Project? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he wants other people to come and help save him from uh, from the darkies. Yeah. Or whatever. The, the one in town. Yeah. <laughs> 855 450 free but yeah please uh you know get all the haters you know the, the evil people together and have them all hang out together i think that'd be fine so i i think get them the, out of my life the the point that liberty phoenix was trying to make and we're kind of joking around about is that societies should be made up of voluntary interaction mm -hmm. so you know 
in a libertarian society, there could be a group of people that are voluntarily communist. Right. But in a communist society, there could not be a group of people that are voluntary libertarians. Well, the thing is that, uh, you know, libertarians and uh, voluntarists and anarchists all like to talk about this ideal society where everybody's going to live rationally by the non-aggression principle and, you know, be productive and prosperous. But there's stepping stones to that. Like, before we can get to that point where everybody makes sense— uh, you know, we all have to learn to live with each other. Like, even if we dislike each other, at least we have to, you know, understand that every person has basic freedoms. And as long as we're just focusing on our own interests, then we can stay away from that. So if there's, you know, a group of people that particularly dislike another group of people, they can be like, well, I don't like that, but I'll just go over there so I don't have to see it. That's just it. The uh, One of the keys to achieving liberty, if we ever get to do it, uh, will be to allow other people the freedom that you want for yourself. So if you're like me and you want freedom, you know, on all issues, then you have to allow everybody else to have freedom on all issues as well. Now, that doesn't mean the freedom to punch you or the freedom to harm you or destroy property. You have to respect the rights of the others to their property, and their, of course, body is the most what important if, property. What about your right to dangle babies off of balconies? <laughs> Wow, a Michael Jackson reference. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we didn't talk about dangling babies, so let's get to that. Ellen, you said something about the freedom to dangle a baby. Yes, I. it was a Michael Jackson reference, as you pointed out. It was more of a, seemed like a joke, but kind of serious. What were you getting well, at Well, it was both joking and serious. Um, I, I just said it as a joke mostly because it was unexpected. You know, you don't expect people to bring up dangling babies, no. but... Um, no, I was kind of serious when I said that because we were talking about personal freedoms and uh, the rights that people have to be bigots and racists and and uh, generally hate on other people. And, you know, they have the right to feel that way as long as they're not impeding on anyone else. But could you also make the argument that doing something like endangering what, what people would consider endangerment, you know, like drunk driving mm -hmm. or dangling babies, is that really a threat to that person? Is is that a real threat? Is that violence? Is that something not to be I'd concerned about? I'd say there's an argument to say that that's a threat. That's an imminent threat to some, to harm someone who can't do anything about it. Right, and not just to cause harm, but to cause unjust harm. Okay, but what if, what if, let's say this baby theoretically was a a twenty five year old midget, and they were fully capable of reasoning and deciding for themselves, but they were picked up by this person who's much larger than them. Are like they consenting to this? Well, let's just assume that it this surprises them. And all of a sudden, they're being dangled over a cliff or a balcony. Whoa! Uh, <laughs> okay, but no, and I, I think so, that wait, my, I think my question is difference? legitimate. Does it make a difference if they're consenting or not? Yes. Because in in one scenario, their life is being imminently threatened, and in the other... They're consenting to the life being threatened. There's people who consent to dangerous activities all the time, jumping right. out of airplanes. That, that's why I... You know, as much as I can, use the uh, adjective of unjust harm. Mm. You are not allowed to cause unjust harm because people that go out and do mixed martial arts fighting, fighting sure. you know, they know they could wind up having broken bones, or good concussions. They, they could die in that ring. Good point. But they're consenting to it. They know full well what the outcome Consent is. Consent is what makes the difference. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm.